this is my electric scooter. It's a 9-bot ES1. Now, Segways have a series, the ES series. There's an ES1, an ES2, an ES3, and an ES4. An ES1 has got the smaller hub motor and one internal battery. But ES2, bigger hub motor, and just an internal battery. ES3 is an ES1 that has an additional external battery. ES4 is an ES2 with an external battery added. But all of them have in common this piece here. This is the internal battery. And um, what's inside there is 20 lithium ion cells, 18650s. And if you void your warranty and unscrew here and here and here, you can get into that tube and you can extract the battery. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if your battery's failing and you want to put a new one in, that's a good idea. I'll just show you. When you extract the battery, if it's flashing blue, chances are there's some life to the battery. Um, the cells are probably reasonable. However, if there's no signs of life via flashing blue light, then probably something is fried, cells are gone. And I just wanted to show you what's inside one of these and how to get in, in case maybe you wanted to salvage some cells. So I'll get to it right now. Okay, gonna go a little bit out of sequence here. Um, the kind contributor of this battery pack, color-coded with red, meaning this is fried. And remember that flashing blue light on the other unit? Ta-da, right there, it is not flashing blue. So this one is potentially dead. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is actually check the voltage out of here. So you can see the two pin pricks. I've shoved a voltmeter in here and I've established that there's little to no voltage coming off this. That doesn't mean there's no voltage in the pack. It just means there's no voltage coming off the charge board. So now what's in the black box? When you crack one of these open, you've got a central rod, which takes these little units so these are the 18650 cells grouped into four, and they slide down this shaft, and they lock on, and then there's five of them. So you end up with this pretty rigid piece. Then what they do is they take these side rods. One of the rods has thermocouple at the end, you know, cutoff sensors. So if something goes awry inside, it'll send it up to the circuitry to disable the battery and there's two of those the other one does have a thermal couple up here or a thermal sensor to pick up the top of the battery then sitting on top of the stack you got this guy and this actually has two circuit boards so there's a nice big old MOF set there and up here, you got some circuitry as well. And I'm not that electronics guy, so I uh, can't really tell you what they all do, but there you go. I know that the top one flashes nice and blue from some LEDs. In any event, that's what's inside. Now, how do you get inside? I will show you. Okay, there are 13 screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then on the top, there's a whole whack of black silicone, but in the corners. One, two, three, four, total of 13. And what I can tell you is when I first started in at this, uh, each of these screw holes have got some black silicone plugs in there. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll have to cut them out or pull them out. And don't do that. This stuff is soft enough that if you have a screwdriver, you can just drive it in, pick up the thread, and that'll actually force the silicone out. 
So I won't pain you and showing you all of these, but I will show you the top. There's one here. One here. One here. And one there. Okay, so we'll see you in a few minutes while I get the other ones done. Okay, all 13 screws are removed. Now, up here, there is that black silicone caulking around here. And all I do is I just take a bladed screwdriver, flat, and just kind of loosen that black stuff up. And then what I can tell you is the case splits down the two sides. So here's the front the back. And what you can do, depending on how careful you want to be, is just lever in on the side. And of course, it's going to be stubborn on me now, isn't it? Where's the crack? There's the crack. Right there. See, it's opening up there. And then you can just pry it open. And again, And there's also some silicone that they've applied. So as you pry it open, you'll be pulling some of that silicone away. Now those side strips are just on the inside of the two. So depending on what you want to do with this, if you're just trashing it, then you don't have to be too careful if you're just extracting cells, but just know that they're there. And you'll note there are some little key tabs right there. There's a little key tab. So when you pry, pry the front side up and it should pop those key tabs. Okay. And once you get one side, the other comes pretty easily. There you go. She is open. Okay, guys, I got to pause for a safety reminder here. If you kind of don't know what you're doing at all, uh, I don't really recommend you do this because this pack can generate basically 40 volts. 40 volts applied the right way across your heart can stop it. So you just don't want to F around with this stuff. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing. However, if you're watching this video, you probably know what you're doing. So uh, play along with me. Now, by rights, I should also have some rubber gloves on, uh, some you know latex work gloves that would provide some accidental shock. Uh, however, I pretty much know that this pack is dead. So before I go any further, I'm going to double check my assumption. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not touching any contacts as I take it out of its bottom pack, I am making sure I don't have any stray metal bits along here because if you're watching this, you also know that shorting LiPo batteries or lithium ion batteries is not fun. They go poof, hydrogen gas and all that excitement. Okay, so I'm going to come down to the bottom here and you will note that there are these junctions and this is where the packs come up with a little tab and I'm going to check the voltage. I am expecting, oh, oh, see, you do have to be careful. There is no voltage coming out of the pack, but in this module, that's full charge. So that's good news for a scavenger like me, because there's at least some good cells. 
What about here? Ooh, full charge in here. Full charge in here. Full charge in here. Full charge in here. So, never assume, because as the saying goes, makes an ass out of you and me, especially if you get fried. But I'm going to check the other side now. Same deal. Go to the bottom. Wow. Full charge. Full charge. Full charge. Full charge. Full charge. So this is quite interesting because the previous packs, what happens is these are a 10S. So one half of the pack has 10 cells in series. The other half of the pack, 10 cells in series, and then they parallel them. And what typically happens in the ones I've seen so far is one bank of cells will register you know, uh, nearly zero volts. The other will register lesser volts. So it's usually half of the battery pack dies. But in this case, it would lead me to believe that the failure is probably in the circuitry. So I may be able to take what I assume to be a good board from one of my previous packs and mount it onto this lot of good cells. Um, so this is a nice surprise for this guy to replace these packs, you know, your 150, 200 bucks. And these were just tossed away. So anyway, there you go. That's what's inside. If it was not the same uh, finding, uh, that is, if I had found a bunch of dead cells, I'll just show you. These tabs here, because they're just lightly spot welded, what you can do is you can get under, peel them up, peel them up. And if you peel these all up, then you can take these sidebars off and you can disassemble. Snip the connections, pull the tops off, and you can get cells out. Um, but I'm going to end here because I think you'll have seen what you need to see, how to get into these packs, what's inside. And, um, you know, if you come across a source of them or you're refurbishing your own, good luck with it. Thanks for watching. And can you give me a like if you like this? I'd really appreciate it. Cheers.